Hello everyone. I'm in a different spot. I'm on the couch. My husband took my kids out to an event at the library. My mom is taking a nap. The air is running and the dishwasher is going, so I apologize for any background noise. I hope to knock this video out right now in like one shot. I don't stop and go just to make it easier on myself to edit later. Um, but I wanted to give an update on what happened to me um, with what was thought to be a baker cyst and then it's not. Um, I'm not trying to get sympathy or anything. I think it's important to share experiences like this for awareness to make people feel less alone. Um, and also because everybody was just so kind with their well wishes um, and their prayers and their positivity and I, I really appreciate all of that. Um, so what happened was last Tuesday, like a week ago tomorrow, um, literally while I was making dinner in the evening, on the back of my right leg, like behind my knee, I started to feel like an ache. And it was that type of ache that you get when you have like a pimple trying to like burst out um, that angry under the skin pimple and I get those randomly on my body not just my face my neck you know under chest area any place that has a crook that could get sweat you know so I went to my husband who was in the other room. I was like, look at the back of my knee. Am I getting a pimple? And he was like, it's a little red. Maybe it's like a bite or a pimple trying to, you know, burst through. And it continued to have that ache for the rest of the night. And then on Wednesday, it increased the pain. Um, and come night, like when I went to bed and I felt behind my knee, it was like a, a size of like a cherry. Um, so my husband did some searching because our insurance uh, company has, you know, like resources online to read from and went to the Mayo Clinic and, you know, WebMD and all that good stuff. And everything, when you type in like the symptoms, it was coming back a baker's cyst. And it could have made sense in terms of like, because it could happen with like an injury or arthritis. I don't have arthritis. But on Tuesday, I had some heavy knee action. I had to lift my mom out of bed. I had to chase my dog. Um, it, was, it was a heavier day of knee movement. And I'm the type of person who, if I am in pain or I hurt myself, I don't register it. I just keep going. Um, I don't take the time. So it would not be beyond me to injure myself during any of those events, and I just keep going. So the running theory was a baker cyst and I did like it's rice, you know, rest, ice, compression, elevation. And on Thursday, it got a lot worse to the point where I was having difficulty walking. I was enlisting my kids to do way more than usual. I was letting a lot of stuff not happen. It was the bare necessity of survival. And the bump increased in size. Um, and it was the bump itself was red but everything baker cysts could be red and purple because it's like it's bruising your skin and then on friday it was it was worse so we did a telehealth um and took pictures and did the telehealth and the telehealth doctor said yeah it looks like a baker cyst and prescribed an antibiotic in case it was infected and or to prevent infection, but his concern was if it did become infected, it would become MRSA, M-R-S-A infected. So we did like a preliminary antibiotic as a precaution. And I started that, I took four doses and continued with rest, ice, all that good stuff. And then um, on Saturday it was the first time I had ventured out of the house since this began and it was to go to a, a bookstore for um, a comic book store for free comic book day and as I was walking around it was hurting and it felt like it was splitting like it was that tight feeling like if uh, the best way to describe it is if when you get a burn like when you're cooking and the skin starts to tighten that's what it felt like 
times 100 on the back of my knee. And when I got home and I changed into my schmata from my public clothing and I took off my pants, I smelled like open wound. And it smelled like the open wound our cat had before she passed from her uh, cancer wound. And I went to my husband, I'm like, is this open? And it was starting to seep. And the telehealth doctor and what we read online said, if the wound is seeping, you need to go see somebody. So we called our local urgent care to say, hey, if this is a cyst or whatever, do you drain it? And they said, yes, we do drain it. The nurse we spoke to. And when I got there, it's at the discretion of a doctor there if they would want to personally, like while the practice, the urgent care itself might allow it, it's up to the doctor if they want to. And the doctor I saw said no, that they, she would not drain it. She does not drain cysts. And she recommended I go home, I do Epsom salt baths, and then on Monday call for an orthopedic to deal with it. Cause she was like, yeah, it's probably a Baker cyst. Um, so stopped at CVS on the way home. I took my first Epsom salt bath that night. She said to take two a day. I was able to fit one in because of the time. And then on, from, um, Sunday for, from Saturday night to Sunday morning, come Sunday morning when I got up, the agony I was in was indescribable. Like I was sobbing. Um, I am very tolerant of pain. I will plow and work through and this was unimaginable. I had unmedicated birth, you know, and this was, it, it just exceeded that. And I started to have a panic attack from it. And my husband was like, it's time, This we need to go to the ER. You can't be expected to call an orthopedic on Monday, wait for an appointment. You can't continue this way. And I will admit I didn't wanna go because of the money. Uh, you know, hashtag American healthcare. I would, I, I send all of my family to doctors and ERs if necessary, but I didn't want to do it for myself um, because I dread getting this bill and it shouldn't be that way. Um, but we went to an ER center and it's, it's an ER with no hospital attached. So they don't admit like for anything they treat emergencies there and if you have one there and you're going for a non reason to be admitted I highly recommend them it goes so much faster in and out so much faster um, so I went there and I was immediately taken in and they said I don't think this is a Baker cyst well they first said was it diagnosed with an ultrasound and I said no they said Baker cysts are only diagnosed with ultrasounds so they just put it down as like an open wound, abscessed wound, so that the ER doctor who came in didn't come in, you know, misled. And I was like, fine, that's fine. I'm not here to mislead anyone, I wanna get treated. And he came in and was like, I don't think this is a Baker cyst. He's like, but I'm gonna press on it, and if it, um, I'm gonna get graphic. So if you're not into that, scroll, forewarning you. He's like, I'm gonna squeeze it, and if it's clear liquid, it's like, you know, kneecap fluid. And then he's like, then I'll do an ultrasound to confirm it's a Baker cyst. Um, if it's not clear and it's pus-like, it's, it's an abscessed wound. And when he pushed it, um, the scream I let out, and it was pus. So he's like, this is not a Baker cyst. Um, and he, he, he kept pushing on it cause, um, it was too infected. The area was too infected to numb locally. I would have had to be admitted for them to numb it to that extent it needed. Um, he's like, I couldn't numb you locally enough, but it's not going to do anything. And I was like, do what you got to do. And I gripped the side of the bed and the nurse said, scream if you need to scream. And I screamed but he drained it um, until the point where he was just now getting to the red stuff of your body. Um, and he's like, this is infected and it's MRSA. So it was an immediate antibiotic drip. Um, and because we don't know the exact origins of the wound, I got a tetanus shot as well in this arm. So this arm is hurting today. 
Um, and they dressed it there with special cream and solution, which I also have at home, and wrapped it. And it was an hour long drip. And um, I caught up on some old special victims unit on TV. Haven't seen that in forever. Um, and I had a slight fever. I had, I had a panic attack at the urgent care on Saturday. And then I had two panic attacks at the ER on Sunday. And one of the panic attacks was happening during them taking my blood pressure. So you can only imagine what my blood pressure was at that moment. Um, so they drew a line around the redness. And you know, if it exceeded that, I would have to go to a hospital for admittance um, for nonstop IV medication. And if it doesn't, if, it, if the redness doesn't spread, but it refills and it's painful, or I start getting a high fever, chills, vomiting, I have to go to the hospital for admittance for a nonstop antibiotic. And to continue the Epsom salt baths, but just once a day or else I'm redressing this multiple times and it only needs to be dressed once. Um, so I took another Epsom salt bath today to help draw out more of the fluid. Um, and I have an antibiotic um, that's for MRSA. I discontinued the other antibiotic because it's useless, as well as prescription strength ibuprofen. You know, the nurse is like, nobody needs to be a hero. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's, that's this journey in a nutshell. Um, we still don't know the why. Of course, my white blood count cell was extremely high because of the infection. But um, the, is, there's just a question of like why this happened. He said it could have been a pimple. Like as soon as if there was just the smallest of like a pinprick in my skin and the bacterias that got in did did a number on me. Because um, I don't have any cat scratches. I, I wear pants. I wear like long like sweatpants things all day. I don't have any dog scratches. I don't remember being bitten by anything. I don't. I'm a redhead who doesn't like to go outside unless necessary. Um, I don't know that's why they did a tetanus shot because they just didn't know the origins. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. So it's still hurting nothing like it was. Pretzel, our dog just came over and she's wanting to check on me. Um, so I continue with everything and I have to find a doctor because since getting new insurance, as we get every single year, it's just so hard to nail down a primary when your insurance changes every year. Um, but I need to find ones to do a checkup on this. Personally, I think I need a wound doctor. Um, oh dear, here comes Pretzel. Say hello. Yes, thank you. I'm okay. Um, I think Pretzel. Oh dear. I, here, come on. She wants to... I haven't been on the couch a lot with her. I've been on the recliner, so when she sees me on the couch, she gets very happy. You can come up. Um, as I was saying, I think I need a wound doctor more than a primary care for this. That's just where my brain is going. I don't need referrals, and they didn't specifically say what type of doctor I should follow up with. They just said follow up with a doctor. But yeah, that's what's going on. So it was an infected abscess with MRSA. At one point he said a double infection, like I had two infections. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't explore the conversation because it was while I was gripping the bed, screaming in pain. So yeah, that's what's going on. I, I'm gonna make my menu plan video after this and I'll, I'll probably post that tomorrow. Um, I wanna post this this evening. And I, I have some drafts that I will be posting and I always put when it's a draft. Um, just because it's harder for me to get around to make a video right now. I can, I can probably do some voiceovers for like recipes. Um, but it's just, it's just a little hard right now. And I know everybody's so forgiving and, um, yeah, but that's what's going on. I wanted to update you all and, um, be aware of stuff like this. It feels, I don't like feeling this way. Pain aside, I don't like feeling so helpless. Um, so mentally, this has been really hard and I keep going to my husband, am I going to get better? 
And he's like, yeah, it's just gonna take time. And I'm like, I don't have time. But um, that's what's going on. So I hope y'all are doing okay. Again, I thank you so much for your well wishes. It means so much. And I'll talk to you later.